This is a photogate. It's a common piece of high school laboratory equipment that can be used to find the speed of an object by measuring how long it takes the object to pass through the gate. They aren't cheap to buy, but in this video, I'll show you how to build one from simple circuit components that you can interface with the Raspberry Pi. If you're interested in how the photogate works, you'll need to have had some experience using GPIO pins as inputs and understand how phototransistors can be used to detect light. The photogate has two main components, a light source, such as an infrared LED, and a light sensor, in this case, an infrared phototransistor. Sometimes photogates will also have an indicator light, such as this red LED, to show when something is breaking the path of light from light source to sensor. Here's how it works. The infrared LED in the photogate always remains on. When its light strikes the phototransistor, the circuit will output a low signal. Conversely, when something blocks the path of light, the circuit will output a high signal. In our Python program, this event will be recorded as the start time. When the object moves out of the path of light, the phototransistor is again illuminated and the output will return to low, which will be recorded as the end time. From these two times, a time interval can be calculated. If we also know the length of the object that passed through the photogate, it's straightforward to calculate the speed at which the object moved through the gate. To set up the circuit for the photogate, we first need to provide current for the infrared LED. In this circuit, I've chosen to use the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt rail as it will easily provide enough current even when connecting multiple photogates. We next place the phototransistor in a potential divider circuit and connect the potential divider's output to a GPIO input pin. A description of how this potential divider circuit works is outlined in the phototransistor tutorial mentioned at the start of this video. If you'd like to include an indicator light for when the gate is blocked, you can further connect the output of the voltage divider to an NPN transistor. We must use a fairly large resistor on the base of the transistor to ensure that the voltage divider outputs correctly, though not too great as to prevent the LED from turning on. Running this circuit through a simulation, the voltage divider measured 3.23 volts when dark and 0.08 volts when light, both figures being well within the acceptable margins of their respective voltage thresholds. One easy way to put this circuit together is to place the components into a piece of rigid cardboard. Not only is paper a good insulator, but it's easy to keep the components in place while they're being soldered to the connecting wires. For a more sturdy build, you can use PVC pipe. These pieces will stay together without glue, though I did use a hot glue gun to fix the LED and phototransistor in place. All that's left to do now is write the program. We begin with importing the necessary modules and setting the GPIO pin numbering. We only need to use one GPIO pin, which we set as an input. Next, we must assign initial values to the three variables that we'll need in this program. The start and stop times will be used as previously discussed to record the time that the sensor is blocked and unblocked respectively. Gate state is used to compare the most recent recorded state of the photo gate with the current value of the GPIO input pin. As the gate should start empty, gate state and the GPIO pin will both start as false. When the input pin changes to true, we'll notice this change by comparing it to gate state. All of the remaining code is placed in a try accept block to safely allow for keyboard interrupts. Unless interrupted, the program will continually loop through one important question. Has the value of the GPIO pin changed from its last known value? If it has, either something has entered the gate or something has left it. The first thing to do is flip gate state to the new value. Next, if the new state is true, something has just entered the gate, so a start time needs to be recorded. On the other hand, if the new state is false, something has just left the gate and the stop time needs to be recorded. At this point, we can output the time difference, and if we know the length of the object that passed through the gate, we can also calculate its speed. I place these output statements in an if statement that checks to see if the time interval wasn't due to a noisy event, such as a fuzzy edge to the object partially blocking the phototransistor. When the pendulum swings between the gate, we get an output of the time interval in which it breaks the beam, and more importantly, the speed at which it's going. As expected, the speed of the pendulum is decreasing with each swing through the gate. A simple extension to the program is to set it up for analyzing the period of a pendulum. For this, we need to calculate the time when the object is in the center of the gate, which I've called mid. This can be calculated by taking the average of the start and stop time. To calculate the period, we find the difference between the current mid time and the previous one, and then multiply this value by 2. 
we need to multiply by 2 as the difference in times is only for half of a complete swing. Here you'll notice that the period is oscillating between two values. This is due to the photogate not being properly centered. So this program now gives us a way to position the photogate correctly. There's a lot more that you can do with photogates, such as analyzing collisions or measuring the acceleration due to gravity. And with a little modification to the program, you can set up multiple photogates for more complex experiments. Of course, the real fun is applying what you've learned to making your own experiments.